Hey, I'm Cameron Stover from HuntingGearDeals.com to bring you another episode of the Hunting Gear Podcast. Today, I'm going to be joined by Chase Herndon from Spartan Camera to talk about their impressive lineup of cellular and non-cellular trail cameras. You're going to pick up a lot of tips for not only trail cameras, but also for hunting in the Appalachian Mountains that Chase Herndon's from. So, without further ado, let's get to the show. Today's episode of the Hunting Gear Podcast is brought to you by Code Blue Sense. Not only do they have an extensive lineup of deer scents and urines, but they also have some scent elimination products like laundry detergent, field spray, and everything else you need. So before you get started with your hunt this season, be sure to check out Code Blue Scents. Chase Herndon from Spartan Camera. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Cameron, I have uh, been eat up with the deer hunting since I can remember. when I couldn't even walk, my father was carrying me through the woods. And, uh, you know, it, it's been that way ever since. I, I've been obsessed with it. And, and quite honestly, that's that's all I do in my free time. So um, it's always been a huge part of my life. And, you know, as a kid, I always dreamed of working in the industry. And uh, about six or eight months ago, that finally played out. And um, so really enjoying it so far and uh, excited to see where it goes. Me too, man. I'm excited to talk about the Spartan cameras. That's who you're representing today. Um, How'd your hunting season go this past season? It was brutal. Uh, It it ended up working out, but it was brutal. I hunted, I feel like I probably hunted more this year than I ever have. Um, The first three weeks of season, I didn't even have a shooter buck on camera. Took a hard hit last year from other hunters uh, connecting on a lot of the deer I had, but this year I had to just start fresh, go to new areas and Luckily, I, th- I think it was October 17th or 18th when I finally found a shooter. Um, and I, I laid on him the rest of the season and didn't connect until December 15th. So he was a weird deer, too. Um, usually you, you get a buck and you might not get him every day in the daylight or, or even uh, maybe just once a week in the daylight. But you typically you get a lot of nighttime pictures. And that deer, he didn't move at nighttime. If he showed up, it was going to be 8 o'clock in the morning or, or 5 o'clock in the evening. So um, it, it ended up working out, though uh conditions were right and i snuck in there and got him so how much did trail cameras play into that role of finding a deer and then focusing in on that one specific target buck because you were blanking throughout the beginning of the season much like mine yeah well well, i'll tell you what i actually found him on one of the it's it's a spartan lumen it's a little white flash camera Uh, it was in an area with with zero service and i hung the camera and Honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I left the camera for a month and went back and and checked it, and he was on there. So, but cell cameras did play a huge role because uh, he would disappear sporadically. He's the weirdest deer I've ever hunted in my life. I've hunted a lot of of big mature deer, and just the way he acted was unlike any I've ever saw. If he showed up this morning at eight o'clock, I might not see him for two weeks. And keep in mind, I've probably got fifteen cameras scattered over a I would say a three mile radius in that area and he wouldn't show up on any of them. So I don't know where he went. And, you know, there was probably three times that I wrote him off as dead. Somebody either shot him or uh, maybe he even moved to another area, but lo and behold, he would typically, it was two weeks. He would stay gone. And I'm talking no daylight pictures, no nighttime pictures, just no trace of him whatsoever. And then bam, he would show up right in the broad daylight. So that's actually, I, I, I hunted him really hard for probably a month, a uh, month and a half. And then I just kind of lost hope and decided I was going to try to find something else to, to capitalize on in late December. I'll never forget. I was on the way to, to a Christmas shop with my family on December 13th, I think. And he showed up and I, I was with my dad who also hunts. And I told him that day, I said, I'm, I'm laying on until the last light on December 31st and, and I'm going all in, you know? So uh, luckily he, he made it easy on me. And in two days I, I put my tag around him. So. Yeah, man, cell cameras play a fun role role in that, especially when you're out shopping and you get that notification. It's like, oh, man, I should have been hunting today. Well, it's a bittersweet deal. Um, It's exciting for sure, but also it it gives you that uh, perspective of what you just said. I wish I was in that tree stand. So, Yeah, I remember remember a few years ago, actually, the the buck, his skull was back here on the wall, but unfortunately he didn't die by the fate of my arrow. He got hit by a car and had to get a salvage tag once I found him, but he come in wounded and I think I was running a Spartan, a camera at that time. And 
I was at work. We had had a rollover incident with a, a with a very large truck um, that come off of one of our properties at work. And I'm sitting at work beside my boss and my phone starts dinging. I'm like, golly, there's that daggone buck again. I said, I looked at him. I said, can I get off work tomorrow and go kill him? I said, I promise. I said, I'll I'll be done really quick. I said, and I'll come back. And he's like, I mean, you can. He said, well, this is a critical situation. I need you to hear. So the next day, ding, ding, here we go again. That buck is right underneath the tree stand one more time. And that was the last time I ever seen him. He, I guess the coyotes kind of caught up with him at the end, but yeah, it was a, that was a heartbreaker. That was one of them that kind of just sticks with you, knowing the fact that I could have been there at that time had work not gotten in the way. So. I, I don't have to, I've never had that situation happen with work, but I have a, a college professor and I, I tell my dad all the time, I think the day I die, I'll remember that college professor's name because he costed me the, what would have been the biggest buck that probably I'll ever have the chance at. So um, that's a big deer then, bud. <laughs> part of my life. Oh, he's a, he's a 200 plus uh, here in Southern West Virginia and, and got two drop times. So um, that's a stud. He was a phenomenal deer, so it yeah. sucked. That's part of life. It is, man. It is part of life, and it sounds like you've, you're you ate up with a hunting bug just like I am, which brought you into this industry, but I'm looking behind you, and I see some gold tip signs, and it looks like those are checks. Like, did you win something? Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's my other hobby besides hunting is uh, competitive archery, so I uh, also started that you know, along with hunting, I started it pretty much as soon as I could walk. Uh, other kids was wanting Thomas the train and uh, Game Boys. And, and all I was asking my mom and dad for was, was archery equipment. I wanted a bow and arrows and, and all that good stuff. So started young, never did even really recognize that I had a talent. Uh, the school I went to, the, the middle school, had a they introduced the NAS program, National Archery and Schools program, into our school um you know me being a hunter decided i wanted to try that and actually won my first tournament there um went on the next several years to win some more nas tournaments and won the world uh tournament in 2016. well then i went into uh, some other organizations with competitive archery and um so now i i consider i'm considered a pro so I worked up through the ranks all the amateur classes and all that and uh it's been a long ride, but it's been a fun ride. So, but yeah, that that's what I do in my pastime. If if it's not hunting season, I'm uh, shooting a bow somewhere. So, well, it all points back to one thing, and that's that final draw when you've got a deer, or bear, or whatever else Absolutely. looking through your pen. So, let's talk. That's an impressive background with hunting. I, I know you've killed some big deer. I checked out your Instagram. Um, and that, a 200 inch deer has got to hurt hard, hit hard, man. But, uh, I feel for you on that one. Hopefully he's still running around. You can pick up some sheds and get back on him this year. Well, he's, he's still running around, um, to the, to the best of my knowledge, but he's went way downhill. I, I've had the deer since 2016 and I actually got one of the sheds laying over here in the floor in 2016. He was it, one side was 86 inches. So he's, uh, is that he, the, is that the buck called double D? Yep. Double D. I always called him sicko because when I first got him, uh, it's kind of a funny story. I, at my first uh, picture of him, I was at the West Virginia Hunting and Fishing Show in 2017. Um, but keep in mind, he still had his 2016 rack. Well, I, I get a picture of this deer, and it, it looks like a dog with 160-inch horns on its head or antlers on its head. So I start feeding him uh, Purina Antler Max and and corn and just anything that I could possibly throw out that, that might benefit him, I was throwing out. Well my then i was thinking he was sick well now i know he was just a young deer um so he he continued to get better every year and it took me like two years to figure out what he was doing because i would only get pictures of him in in february um well come to find out that was where he was moving in february so i end up finding where he actually lived throughout hunting season like probably five miles away and I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. I could show you on a map. It was it was insane. I don't know why he decided to move that much, but he did. So um, I started hunting him in 2020 and hunted him 2020 and 2021. And but now he's he's like 140 inch eight point. Uh, he's went way downhill and 
I know he's a smart deer, so I'm 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 choosing to go after other deer that's that's got bigger racks and it's not going to take my whole season to capitalize on. <laughs> that sounds like he's stolen a few few seasons from you oh, being the monarch of the mountain like he absolutely. was. Absolutely. I I think there was one year I hunted him 50 days in a row in uh, November and December. So you talk about taking a toll on your mental health, that'll do it. Oh, absolutely. I the stresses of hunting season like we look at it and it's like our escape but sometimes man it gets so stressful when you're in that pursuit and that chase that we kind of forget why we're there and i get caught up in that especially on out-of-state hunts and stuff like that where you're in a limited time crunch to find a deer pattern a deer and, and be in the right place at the right time and then you're like i should have just stayed home and hunted west virginia or ohio or something like right. that so yeah, it's it's definitely I, I can agree to that. Um, I got to remind myself all the time why I'm why I'm sitting there and why I'm doing what I'm doing because it's it honestly is. I'm sure you're the same way as I am. I I want to want to be able to connect with that target buck, but at the end of the day, that's that's not the whole reason you're there though. So, um, and I, I feel like I got to remind myself of that constantly because I get caught up in in these big racks and and I've got to bring myself back down to to ground level sometimes you and me both all right brother let's talk about spartan cameras so you've been with them for several months now um, let's kind of a little talk about what's available to the market right now and go from there okay so cell camera wise um we got three models so we we got the the normal the go cam which is just the pretty much i consider it a base model camera it's a workforce and i i use probably I'd say 65 or 70 percent of my arsenal is go cams just because they're simple and um, I can take them in the depths of, of these West Virginia mountains and leave them for for weeks on end and and, and don't have to worry about battery life. Um, then we got the go live one and the go live two and they're they're pretty similar if you look at them the the overall shape is different. Um, but the, the biggest difference between those is the field of view. So the Go Live 2 is actually a wide angle lens. I call them fisheye lens. So it's got 96 degrees field of view. Um, and it's what I like using it for is scrape lines. You know, there's several places I'm sure you can think of just right now that's maybe has six scrapes in one area uh, spread out. So you can throw that Go Live 2 up and actually capture what's hitting all those scrapes. Uh, the Go Live 1 is another really good camera. and it's a it's the the other version of the go live too um but it's the normal lens so uh pretty neat the the biggest feature about the go live one and go live two is the fact that you can go live and i think a lot of people still unaware of that um i can hit one button on my phone and i can see live footage i i, I kind of compare it to a security camera uh, because most security cameras you can see active footage all the time and that's the same with, with these go live. So at any time, if I want to see what's going on in front of that camera, I hit the live button and I can see exactly what's going on. So that's a pretty neat feature. And now correct me if I'm wrong, is anybody else on the market have this live feature in the trail camera space? I know you not, guys were probably first, but is anybody not, caught up? Not to my knowledge, um, which the, the market is growing every day. There's a lot of new uh, brands that's that's coming out with with products so uh it, it's a possibility but i haven't saw it so okay so you guys have had that their initial go live for a little while and you had a chance to test it how is the battery life because i can't imagine like the battery consumption being the same on a live feed camera versus a traditional cellular camera that just sends me one photo or i have to request a video right yeah, so, so it's it's obviously not going to be as good as just a normal camera. And the reason being, and I don't think a lot of people understand this, so the, the Go Cam, for example, um, it's not constantly connecting to what I call the server. So let's say you get a picture right now, it's 1039, you get a picture of your target buck walking by your camera. And we have the option for HD photos, which you know makes it a, a more clear photo. Um, so you hit that HD button to request the HD photo. Well, you're not actually going to get that HD photo until the camera connects to the server again, which is when it takes another photo. So the go live, on the other hand, if, if you get a picture right now and you want to request an HD, you hit that HD button, it immediately connects to the server and sends your HD photo over. 
So in other words, it's, it's constantly pinging off that service or the server or cell tower, whatever you want to say, um, and, and connecting with the server. So you can always, no matter what uh, time of the day it is or, or whatever, you can always give your camera commands. If you want to change the delay, you can do that within a minute or two. Um, and that, that's part of the go live feature, you know, in order to connect to that live footage, it's got to always be connected to the server. So, yeah, the, the battery life is not as good, but it has a built in lithium battery. So that helps obviously with the battery life. Um, and honestly, the, for, for all the features it has, the battery life isn't bad. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't use corn in West Virginia. It's legal um, on private land. So. I put mine on corn piles a lot of times and never have any bad uh, battery experiences. Typically, I can get two to three weeks off a set of batteries. But, it, you know, if that's not long enough for you, uh, a lot of people's running. Spartan actually sells a, a solar panel for these cameras. And I have guys out west that's running solar panels and they make the joke to me all the time. They're like, the only time we go back to our cameras is when we got to change the strap because it's dry rotted. <laughs> so, um, I personally can't use solar panels because I have these uh, furry black bears running around and they tend to make things like that chew toys. So I've got to be careful on my camera setups and, and what I use. If not, the bear will demolish them. So, Yeah, battery power can get really expensive really quick. So Absolutely. Um, having the option to run solar. Um, what about an external battery pack if you, you're not able to run solar? Because sometimes inside the canopy of the trees, especially in the summertime, maybe on minerals and things of that nature, you don't gather as much light as you would be on a field edge. Right. So is there an external battery pack that we can plug in? Yes, sir. Yeah, it, it's a lot like the, the external battery pack for the go cam. Um, so it's, it's just the, the box and the cable that plugs in, and then you put your, your battery inside, and it, it – I, I've never used those either, so I can't tell you a whole lot about them because, like I said, the bear. So I, I don't get to to experience all of these luxuries that Spartan offers just because of the bear. Um, I, I've always thought about using an external battery and just digging a hole and burying it, and I, I've wondered if that would maybe would help my issues. Yeah, that or maybe even if you can get one in a small tree and just hang it up even higher than the camera right. is, maybe that way. But I, I feel your pain with cell cameras and bears. If you don't get them elevated, man, they're a pain in the butt because one little flip of the wrist and they'll break an antenna off and they're just a pain in the butt. But, man, they taste great. Uh, they're <laughs> one of my favorite things each season. If I get a chance to kill one, like if you get a right butcher shop, man, those bear, bear, my bear burger slider, my kid loves them. And yeah. that's his favorite meal right now is bear burger sliders. So anytime I get a chance to kill a, a 150 to 250 pound bear, I'm, I'm taking that opportunity every year. Absolutely. I, I tell you, you, you were talking about hanging your cameras in a tree. I had several last year and, and typically I don't have this problem, but last year I was hanging them every bit of 10 feet, maybe 12 feet in a tree. And they were still getting up there and rubbing all over them and smacking around. So what I end up doing, because it, the, a lot of the places I hunt, I'm driving at least 30 minutes in a truck and then probably another 25 to 30 minutes on an on a ATV. So it's not really ideal for me to hang a camera today and have to go back tomorrow and change an antenna. If I hang a camera, I'm wanting to, to, to sit and soak for two weeks at least. Um, so I, I, I obviously, I've always used bear boxes uh, or security boxes, whatever you want to call them. Last year, I had somebody fabricate some little antenna guards, and it's just three pieces of metal that surround the antenna on the, the top casing. And that has really helped a lot uh, to keep the bear off of antennas and cameras and all that. So I think I'm on to something there. There you go. Pitch that idea to Spartan, patent it out, and start charging them for it. <laughs> All right, so you've got this Go Live camera, and I had a chance to test the original Go Live before it came out, uh, probably just like yourself, and I really enjoyed it because what it allowed me to do, like I could watch the body language of a deer when I wasn't there, a and deer act differently when they're being deer versus when they're being hunted by people. Have you had your chance to where you're just sitting on the couch and you open your phone and you're just watching deer? Absolutely. Um, two things I'll, I'll start with. Number one, you know, 
we, we've had cameras that video for for a very long time but it still misses a lot because if it takes a 30 second video uh i don't know about you but i typically run my cameras on a one minute delay so there, there's a one minute in between that you're not seeing what's going on um so i feel like with this live feature number one you know you can you can see constant footage of what's happening how the deer's acting the whole entire time he's there and one of the biggest things to me is being able to see how that deer's leaving um you know to, to to know where he's going because there's a lot of times that just because the last photo you get of him he's in the right side of the screen that doesn't mean he isn't walking and circling back around to the left side of the screen so i've really found it beneficial to watch that stuff and figure out exactly where the deer's uh, leaving and, and even sometimes you know you can figure out where they're coming from if, if there's another deer there that you're you're watching on the live feed and then there pops up your target buck out of the the back left corner of the screen then you know you kind of got an idea of where he's coming from so i feel like it, it's very beneficial um and it's most definitely addicting because i i could sit and watch that live stream all day every day if there's deer there so i i know me as a hunter and you yourself like when it comes september october and definitely november my wife gets really upset with me she's like you're always on your phone i'm like i'm not scrolling through facebook i'm just watching cell camera information right. come in and i'm trying to figure out where i'm going to hunt tomorrow so man I, I can't tell you how many times i've upset the significant other by just being on my phone for an extra minute or 10. <laughs> I, I'm really bad any time during hunting season that if I wake up at, at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., I about break my neck trying to turn over and get my phone to see what's on the Spartans. So yep. it, it's addicting. Um, and, and it's certainly, I, I feel like it can, it can save you a lot of, um, a, a lot of unnecessary hunting time. So. I feel like it's helped me a whole lot with my success, and I, I'm sure you'll vouch for that too. Uh, absolutely, and I haven't utilized the Go Live cameras very much um, in the in the past. Just that one camera that I was testing out, but I have utilized cell cameras to enhance my hunting experience. And what I mean by you just talked about the time frame that it takes you to get to a hunting area. I can remember hunting down. I'm originally from Southern West Virginia as well. I can remember one spot in particular that I was hunting and it was a two hour trip to get there one way. A and that included an hour and a half four wheeler ride and a 30 minute walk to the stand. And, and a lot of people don't realize that. And I live in Ohio now. I'm like, you can, you can find some public ground to get deep into. But back when I was a kid, like you could go 30, 40, 50,000 acres of coal company and timber property that was just open to the public at that time. Um, and you could really get deep. And these cell cameras allowed me to gather that data and figure out not only where I'm hunting tomorrow, where I'm hunting next year as well, because I yeah. could take a camera, throw it up in an area and let that soak and not have to look at data six months from now when I check it, but also this year as well. And then I can pull that card out of it and then have that data. So cell, cell cameras have made my life a lot easier. But there's the ethical side of it that a lot of people in this industry talk about is, are cellular cameras ethical if we abuse them? And to play devil's advocate, the go live might be the, the hardest one to talk about. But when I do the, the VM diagram, positives versus the negatives, I can't really distinguish the difference in the go live features and a regular cell camera features when it comes to being ethical or unethical, simply because that information is still there with a picture versus a live feed. So when people get hung up on that, I, I'm not that guy. I like to have that available details and information to impact my hunt for tomorrow, next week. Um, and I know you guys probably get a little bit of kickback from that too, but at the end of the day, like I, I'm a supporter of the technology in our industry because we are limited on time time is our number one resource that we don't have available to us so if i can pinpoint what day of the week i need to hunt next week because of the cell phone cell camera data or that situation where it's like man if i can get in the woods tomorrow that's going to save me seven days of vacation if i can get in there tomorrow right 
that right there is the number one ticket for me. I mean, I'm a new dad. I've got businesses that I'm running podcast episode. Like I need to know when the best time to hunt is. And that, that gives me that data. There's no more understanding what the moon phase is and yes, weather and all this stuff plays in the factor, but having that full information, real time information helps me predict when I'm going to be able to hunt next. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we can both agree that we want to be able to connect on our target buck as quick and as, uh, as easy working as we can. So, um, you know, I feel like cell cameras help that a whole lot because before, I mean, let's go back to when you didn't have cameras at all. Um, you had no clue what was in the area. My dad tells me stories all the time about setting up on these, uh, big scrape lines or, or rub lines and then in walks a, a, a eight point that's 115 inches, you know, so you never had, you never know what was doing that sign. Um, then you go to regular cameras and, and you knew what was doing that sign, but there was times when you found out after his pattern had, had completely changed. Um, I, I feel like in the rut, and I'm sure you've had new deer come into areas before that you hunt. They don't stay very long most of the time. They may be there for three or four days and then they, they head on out. They go to the next area. So I, I feel like with regular cameras, a lot of people were catching deer on the, the back end of their pattern and it was causing them to, to not be as successful. Well, now with these cell cameras, you know within a minute that that deer's there, and if he shows up again tomorrow, then the third day you best be in the tree stand waiting on him. If you know if work permits and family permits and all that, so um, it's it certainly changed the game, and it's I got a feeling it's only going to get better from here. Me personally, I don't know what else they can change, but they never fail to uh, to make some awesome improvements every year. So uh, I mean, one of the major improvements, like trail cameras, have probably killed more helped hunters kill more deer than any other advancement in technology since the compound bow but i think they've also saved more deer and when i say that is knowing what's out there how many deer have you passed up this season because you're looking for that one deer that was there absolutely uh, i mean yeah, I, I can scroll through my phone right now and i could count how many deer that i saw from the stand versus how many deer that i was willing to shoot an arrow at it's huge huge yeah. difference and that didn't happen 20 years ago before trail camera information there, let alone the cellular camera instantaneous feeds that we have now. Right. Yeah, for sure. I, and that's the deer I was telling you about earlier, the, the 200 that I, I came close to connecting on. That was one of those years that I, I look back and I shake my head all the time because some of the deer that, that I didn't even give time of day to because of him was silly. Uh, I can think of one. I actually end up actually killing him the, the following year. He's a probably a, a low 150s 10. Um, and I had him like clockwork uh, all the time the year before when I was hunting the big deer. And I never even gave him the time of day. Uh, I think it's partly because I'm hard headed and, and I don't care to go without killing a deer. It, it, it kind of sucks, you know, when you do uh, dump a whole big bunch of time and effort and, and money into a season. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm a risk taker. I'm willing to gamble it all for, for a chance at, at the big one. So. Yeah, I mean, and that comes back into like even your tournament archery situation. If you're not willing to take that 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 finite shot to to go for the chance to win and not settle for the position that you could finish in, you'll, right. you'll never go to that next level. I know Levi right. Morgan talks about it being fearless all the time, and that's what sets him. He feels like that's what sets him apart is the fact that he's not afraid to lose. And we have to do that on the hunting side of it as well, like passing deer and making those gambles. And like, I know he's going to be here, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on the wind. And I'm going to go in and try to kill him. And sometimes you only get a split second. Right. Well, that, that's always been my motto with, with hunting. And I, I honestly feel that that's what's gave me the success that um, I've had over the last six or seven years is, you're not going to kill that deer if you're not there. And I, I'm going to tell you something you'll probably shake your head at and, and everybody watching is probably going to think this kid's crazy here in the, here in these Southern West Virginia mountains. I can't pay attention to the wind. Uh, it's just not ideal. Um, you know, if it says that there's a West wind, you're probably going to get there and it's going to be an East wind. That's just how these mountains work. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Um, in November, if I'm just getting nighttime pictures of, of my target buck, you're going to catch me there every day I can be there because I, I know how them deer work and eventually they're going to show up. 
and and typically it's going to be with no notice uh you're never going to get that feeling man he might show up tomorrow no he's just going to pop in there and, and it's up to you whether you're there or not so i i hunt a lot of long days and uh a lot of long months throughout hunt season and it typically pays off but it's it's, it's not getting easier in fact i think it might be getting harder <laughs> yeah i mean if you got more competition in the woods with other hunters and less targets to choose from it's definitely going to get harder Absolutely. but you, you mentioned something that always sticks to me and that's what i've lived and died by in our neck of the woods is the fact that you can't pay attention to the wind because it's unpredictable like you can have that west wind on my on paper and it could be blowing you could be on that ridge top and it's blowing west the whole time at some point in time whether there's a deer there or not your wind's going to swirl in those mountains and it's just because there's so many different terrain features and as the wind slows versus it it kind of speeds back up it pulls and drags so i'm like you i don't really give a whole lot of care to the wind in southern west virginia now when i'm in areas like when i go out to kansas or missouri winds everything oh, like yeah. it's it's predictable like if it yeah. sells you a west wind and it's going to change at five o'clock set your talk set your timer it's going to change right but here in west virginia and ohio like it just doesn't it's not predictable to, for me to be that beneficial so i'm willing to go in and take those chances but, Hey, let me interrupt this podcast episode real quick and talk about HuntingGearDeals.com. If you're interested in saving money on hunting gear, there's no better place on the web. Basically, what HuntingGearDeals.com does is scour the web for discounted products on hunting gear and shares them in one convenient location. So type in HuntingGearDeals.com in your web browser and sign up for the daily deal email so you never miss a deal. Now, back to the show. Absolutely. I think a lot of people that that's not from here, they don't understand that because I talk to people from all over the, the nation and like, you mean you don't tell me you don't hunt the wind? I'm like, No, that's that's not possible. I can get 40 foot in a tree and and hope for the best. You know, that's that's my way of hunting the wind, because yep. honestly, if I hunted the wind, I may hunt three days a year um, or, or maybe I should say have three good hunts a year. The other. 30 are going to be uh you you looked at your phone and you got a west wind well then you get there and it's a it's an east wind or something like that so um if it was for hunting the wind i would never get to hunt hardly yep so let's get back into these cameras so we've talked a little bit about the features of this go live camera and, and how technologically advanced it is compared to a lot of cameras on the market and it's a smaller platform size on the camera like it's not, that go live 2 is not a big giant bulky camera i remember when trail cameras hit the market and they were the size of this laptop <laughs> and i'm looking at a live feed camera now that looks like it would almost fit in my pocket as i traveled to and from so i mean that's pretty cool it, it will fit in your pocket i've actually tried um not that i carry my cell cameras in my pocket but you know <laughs> Just being curious, it will fit in your pocket. If you take the antenna off, it'll fit right in there. So That's awesome. So the workhorse of the Spartan lineup is that GoCam version. So it's been on the market for a little while, and I I, I guess it's earned that workhorse title. Uh, the prices are pretty fair, and it does have like the 4G capabilities, of course, but AT&T versus Verizon, is it a dual SIM card camera, or is it one or the other? Um. I think it's one or the other, but they actually have the the model, and I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, just because I'm I, I don't like much change. I typically just stick with what's always worked, and um, they have the M series, which kind of I call it mooching off of of all the different cell towers. Uh, and there's a lot of people that's that's going crazy about those cameras and how good they are. So I, I might I might try one this year just to see. Um, but I, I can certainly see where it would be beneficial because there's areas that I hunt where Verizon picks up better and there's areas I hunt where uh, AT&T picks up better. But yeah, to answer your question, it, it's not like you, you can't buy a Spartan Go Cam and then pop an AT&T SIM in it. And then if that don't work, pop a Verizon SIM in it. It's, it's two different. Uh, I don't know if it's softwares or, or something within the camera or, or what it is. So that, that multi-carrier, that M series that you're referring to, is it just pick up whatever's best for the area or does it have to have do you have to swap the cards and just check it yourself no sir it, it picks up whatever picks up best so um let's say you're in a you're in an area where verizon picks up best it's going to use those verizon towers to 
you know, generate service. Um, let's say you're in an area where U.S. Cellular picks up best, then it's going to use that. So it, it just kind of searches off all of those uh, towers, and then whichever one picks up the best, that's what it uses. So uh, That's a no-brainer for somebody that's looking for an area that has limited service because – like it, what, when I remember growing up, like AT&T was the best cellular provider down in the area that I lived at. And then one day it wasn't. And then right. I'm like, well, now I got to get a new cell phone. So you get a, a whole lineup of trail cameras. I mean, let's face it. Those go live cameras aren't cheap. You get a few of them or, and I don't know if that multi-cam feature was, but the go cam I know has one. You can get a lot of money in those real quick. So I right. just say guts jump into the multi-cam and pay the extra money and get that multi-carrier version so you never have to worry about it because at some point in time you're not that camera is going to leave that tree on home base and you're going to want to expand your hunting horizons so take advantage of that for sure absolutely yeah and the, the go live one and go live two both come in the m uh, series as well so to, to my knowledge every cell camera we have has that now Awesome. So delivery of these photos and, and even the go live version as well, when you can watch these videos, how is the consumer getting? Do you have an app for that or can I log into the website? Yes, sir. Uh, you, you can actually do it several different ways. Uh, number one, you can log into the website. Uh, you can get them off the app. I, I've always liked the app because there's a lot of different things you can do within the app. Um, so it, it's pretty much like anything you want to do to that camera or anything that you can do in person, you can do over the app. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's just it's it's really good so I, I like it a lot so or do you have the availabilities of sharing cameras say for instance you and i are hunting and you want to share your cameras with me where this big giant buck is can i watch your cameras and you watch mine even though we have different accounts yes sir so um there's an option in there to set, share camera and all i need from you is your email address and and i can enter that in Hit the submit button and it's going to send you an invite to uh, to join my camera and it's pretty neat because when you look at the app i'll pull mine up here so i, I don't tell you wrong um th there's actually at the top of the the page there's a my camera tab and then there's a shared camera tab so let's say you have 20 spartans and i have 20 spartans and we're sharing them with each other we're not getting our cameras mixed up so there's two different tabs that uh keeps my cameras and your cameras separated that's interesting. And then say, can you like, would I have the availability to hide a camera or something like that if I didn't want to look at that anymore? You could delete it um, and, and kind of, I guess you would say, unshare it with yourself Okay. if you didn't want to see the photos anymore. Yeah. Well, I, for me, like I hunt a lot with friends and stuff and some of them are where I might be running one brand of camera. They might be running the other and like. So having that ability to share it with leasehold members and things like that, man, that, that's always fun because it brings that camaraderie and teamwork together that I lost. Like for a long time, I was lone wolf solo, just out on my own hunting. But what I found a lot more enjoyable is the fact that if I can bring a friend along with that hunt with me and he doesn't necessarily have to be in the tree, but the planning stages, watching these cameras, that predictability. And when I call you, my buddy and I'm like, hey, man, I'm going in tomorrow and I'm going to kill that deer stay tuned like i've done it like i've made those predictions and that's a bold statement to say but like i know when it's going to happen if i can watch these cell cameras and predict that sometimes that sometimes you're eating crow um but it's really fun to be able to share cameras and share that information and just have somebody along with your hunt and if you've got buddies out of state or whatever having that cheerleader cheering you on that power of positivity i've got one guy man in my pocket that he's that guy like all the time it's like oh you're going to kill him man he's there you're going to kill him. tomorrow's the day tomorrow's the day like having that little bit of shared experience with somebody it really keeps the positivity up on those week long two week long drives for that one particular deer absolutely I, and i tell you another uh beneficial factor that goes along with what you're saying there is is you know that ever since i've been a kid that's been mine and my father's thing to do is we're we're running the hills all summer trying to find deer and then the whole time i'm sitting in a tree stand you know i'm sitting there texting him about hunting so um I, when a big buck starts to come in i can't pull my phone out and send my dad a text and say here he's coming but he has my spartan app on his phone and he's sitting there watching that the whole time so he he it's kind of cool because he gets to watch it all unfold and see see how things go down especially with this go live feature now 
uh, me and him kind of have this thing where when a, when a deer does come in, uh, he can actually go live and, and it gives you the option to record. So you hit the record button and he, that's his thing. You know, when, when a deer comes in on me, he'll hit the record button. He's a cameraman that's sitting 40 miles away on the couch. So it's pretty cool. That's hilarious. Cause I, that's, I use the same feature when I was testing that go live. I, my cousin was coming up from West Virginia to hunt in Ohio with me and I had him on post just this deer pegged. I'm like, man, this is the stand. This is, or it was in a blind. I was like, this is the blind you got to be in. I said, today's the day, go get in it. So I'm sitting at home because I'd already tagged out and I'm watching this hunt unfold and I'm sitting there thinking, why is he not taking the shot? Why is he not taking the <laughs> shot? Like, I'm just like, I'm, my heart's beating just like his would be. And uh, something happened and he, I don't know what happened in the blind, but he ended up not getting a shot on that deer. And it was just as heartbreaking had it been me in that situation because I had that in-depth live look that you just don't get to see right. anywhere else. So that was really cool. Well, that, unfortunately, this year I, we didn't get to do that with the the deer that I connected on. Um, the deer came in facing me, and I watched him forever. Um, it was probably only like five minutes, but I swear it felt like thirty. I mean, I it, it was killing me. But uh, eventually, my dad, I guess he gave up and thought I'd forgot my release or something. I wasn't going to get a shoot, and he actually got off the live. And it wasn't no time after that I shot, but. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine giving up on the situation. That guy is. <laughs> I'm just going to let him let this deer walk by and not say anything. Well, it, it, I, I had watched him forever. And honestly, it, if I wouldn't have had the archery experience that I had, I probably wouldn't have took the shot because he was, even when I shot, he was really hard quarter too. And when I tell you I was aiming at the, the very edge of the shoulder blade to, to make sure I hit where I needed to, I was aiming as close as I could possibly aim without not without catching any bones so um it, it was a tough shot but it worked out so. well there you go man can't beat that so spartan cameras got a t several different offerings for cellular cameras do they have any non-cellular cameras that somebody that may not be able to afford the or have the options for cellular cameras do they have those yes sir so so we have two models um we got the lumen and the eclipse and the, the biggest difference between the two is I'm sure you remember 15 years ago when you had those those giant cameras you're talking about that are the size of your laptop that had the big flash on it. And they, they do. They take some phenomenal photos. Well, um, a couple of years ago, Spartan came out with another white flash camera. Um, and they actually have a white flash shell camera. I don't know if you knew that or not. But but the the Lumen is uh, – it, it's a tiny camera. It's It's literally – I would say six to seven inches tall, maybe four or five inches wide. Um, so it's a very compact camera. And then the, the Eclipse is the same camera, but it's the blackout model. So it doesn't have the white flash. But th that's actually what I found my deer with this year. And they're, they're awesome cameras. Battery life is ridiculous. Um, well, I remember the, so I've still got some old Spartan on cellular cameras from back in the day. And a lot of them have one. Yes, they, those SR1s, and some of them have, they've fizzled out a little bit. I mean, it's an electronic device. You can't, 10 years of use or however long it's been, they're, they're just going to fail at some point yeah. in time. So I don't hold anything against the company for that. But the battery life back in on that camera was amazing. I could put a set of batteries in it, whether I was running lithiums or I was running Rayovac alkalines, and it seemed like I never had to change them throughout the season. Is the battery life still as good on those Eclipse and Lumen cameras? Oh, it's, it's ridiculous, and uh, it, it actually runs off of less batteries now. Uh, let me look here. I think it's six batteries is what they run off of. Yeah, I remember those SR1s used to be 12, and I know the size-wise, size, ba size -wise, looking at the cameras, doesn't look like you can get 12 batteries in that. Yeah, it, it, I think it's six is what it is, but it's insane at, at the battery life. Um, and it has a probably my most favorite feature about those cameras is it has a, a built-in LCD screen. Uh, it's like the SR1, but it's a lot better screen. Um, okay. So it's it's really cool, and it's another good feature. You know, we were talking about bear, and bear will eat a regular camera just as quick as they will a cell camera. So oh, yeah. Martin put a, a built-in mounting bracket on the back of those cameras, so you can actually hang it. I like hanging mine. I'll find a sapling that's a little smaller than a pop can and hang it maybe six, seven feet up in that tree just just to where a bear can actually climb it. 
and uh, and angle it down. It seems to work really well. So does it articulate? Is that how that works? What's that? Does that camera articulate? Does that bend, or does that? Yeah, how sure. does that yeah. work? It, it, so it's a metal bracket that's um, hinge. You it's know, a hinge. Or, yeah, it's a hinge. That's exactly okay. right. You know, you know how those cameras have the holes in the back for the Python lock to go through. Yeah. So the the bracket actually there's one of those uh, those holes on the bottom, a series of holes, and the bracket bolts on there, and it just pivots. So the hinge will be here, and the camera will angle this way. Oh heck, that's like a twenty dollars savings right there because I don't oh, yeah. know if you price some of those brackets to do that with, but unless you're making them yourself, those can get pretty costly. So that's a nice little feature. Right, and and the brackets that I've used in the past are are very cheap made and um if a bear just touches it with his paw then it ends up bending and and then you got other problems so so we've talked about bear damage and stuff like that and i know unless a company's crazy bear damage is not going to be covered under a warranty but like what kind of warranty could what i expect on like material defects or something electronic or whatever with a camera well we we have a two-year warranty um and it, it's a very simple process uh it now it is only like you said, it, uh, defects and and things like that. But uh, if if you call Spartan it's customer service and say, hey, you know, tell them a problem, then chances are a lot of times, like the, a lot of people have issues with cell cameras, and it's really not an issue. It's just some something, some kind of bug or something that needs a new firmware, and that's all stuff that that can be fixed over a, a telephone or, or through a computer. Um, if there is something that that our customer service people can't fix and you know it's not determined as user error uh we will send you an rma send that camera back and and fix that so um but yeah it's, it's a two-year warranty and but you do have to make sure that the camera's registered within i think it's 30 days of, of when you purchase the camera okay yeah so basically if i bought one used and said oh yeah i used broken one or something like that i couldn't fish the system there and right get good hey, and that's just smart business there yeah and, and there's some people that that I, I think in their mind they think that bear damage is covered under warranty and uh you know i, I got to remind people constantly is if we had to replace all the cameras that that bear had had tore up then spartan would be hurting yeah i mean that's just that's un that's just common business that just you should have some common sense when it comes into warranties right. and Absolutely. stuff like that it's like if i had a Hunt a hunting clothing jacket and i took gasoline on it and set it on fire that's user <laughs> error like that's that's my fault same thing with a bear you walk in with and you've been eating a candy bar and you rub your hands all over that camera guess what that bear's gonna do right. gonna smell it they got they got a nose better than your hunting dog does or if you got dogs and and they pick up on that and they're gonna chew on it that's how they figure out whether it's edible or not so yeah, I, I even hear people using like scent killer spray or something like that to spray on their sets after they're done it don't matter. The bears still, I, and I don't think it's, I think it's just a, a curiosity thing for them. I think they just see those cameras or smell them and, and wonder what it is. And next thing you know, they're playing with them. Yes. Uh, most of the times I've seen bears and it's just a toy. It, they're just playing. They, when they're looking to, when they're destructive and tearing stuff up, unless it's food related, they're just playing. And right. They're fun to watch in the woods, but man, they're pain in the butt. I had one this was my mistake and i was hunting this particular bear that he was young young boar like two three year old boar and he was destructive like he was aggressive towards people like they were seeing him on a four-wheeler just so happened to be in the area that i was hunting at so i was like i'm gonna try to kill him so I, i'm hunting this little oak flat point and i parked my four-wheeler closer than what i should have um, I kind of parked it maybe 200 yards from the stand and i usually don't do that if i'm deer hunting but i thought Hey, I'm just trying to kill a bear. So I, I get in there and I hunt till dark, nothing. I'm like, okay, no big deal. I mean, it's a bear. You can't predict them for any anything. It's like trying to predict where a squirrel's going to take its next yeah. step. They're frantic when they move around. I get back and I'm like, man, what the heck's on my four-wheeler? That bear had got on my four-wheeler and tore it all to pieces. <laughs> I've heard of that happen multiple times. I got yeah. somebody eating the seat, didn't he? He chewed the seat up, and he what the thing was, he like he used his claws to pull himself up. So he did that, and he took a big chunk out of it. But it was my fault because you know what I had done previously? I'd killed a deer and didn't clean the four wheeler, so I had all the blood and body odor and all that stuff, and right. it, it was in the trail. And he was just like, mm, "What's this thing?" 
and he tore it all to pieces. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that was so stupid. So that I pulled out. I was like, I'm not fooling with this stupid bear again. Like he's he wins. I'm done. <laughs> so. But yeah, man, it sounds like Spartan's kind of got a little bit of for everything with the non-cellular cameras and the cellular cameras. I know it's really easy for a company to get caught up in the cellular camera craze because there's probably more money into it and there's recurring revenue. So having non-cellular cameras in the system for everything else, because I don't need a cellular camera everywhere that I hunt. Um, so I like to have that option. What about data plans and how much is this actually going to cost me after I make my initial purchase? Right. So we, we have several different data plans. Um, they, they all kind of vary on, on different circumstances. So um, you may want to run your camera 12 months out of the year, and I may only want to run mine for, for a month or two months out of the year. So it, it really depends on, on what you, um, what your plans are, you know, and, and, Another big factor is how many photos you get. You might get 5,000 photos a month and I might get uh, a, a thousand. Um, but the plan that I personally run is I, I run the one gigabyte plan. And I, I think it's like $23 a month and you, you get, uh, I think, 3,000 pictures and then a, a big chunk of, of HD photos and uh, some videos as well. Um, and then you can add cameras to that. So, you know, let's say you have five Spartans. Well, if you can get by with only that one gigabyte of data per month, you can put, uh, I think it's up to five cameras. Um, so you can put up to five cameras and it's like a $5 extra a month fee, I think, to to add a camera. Okay. Uh, so unfortunately, we do not have an unlimited data plan yet. Um I'm hoping maybe that's something that comes in the future because I do think it's it's very beneficial to to the guys that want to leave their cameras out year all year long and and are getting a, a lot of pictures. But um, yeah, we we have a data plan for about anything. I mean, okay. if if you if you can think of it, we got it. Other than unlimited, so so now correct me if I'm wrong. Back in the day, like when I had some Spartan cameras, I could put them on my own account. Like if I had Verizon or AT and T cameras, and I could run them that way. Is that still an option, or do I? I would imagine with a multi carrier, like I have to run through Spartan to do that. Yeah, I, I think it it still is an option for some of the cell plans. Um, the only problem is, is like when if you if Cameron was to go out and and register his camera through Verizon then Cameron also has to pay for the, the premium credits and all that stuff to where if you use our data, you don't have to pay for the premium credits. That's just kind of part of the deal and included. Okay. So, so it's probably easier to, for me to just roll that into one, especially if I'm getting that multi-carrier deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's just a lot easier to, to have to, to go through Spartan and, and um, you know, you, you get that access to the app. And, and all that good stuff all in all in one place. You don't have to have three different charges, um, one through Verizon and one through Spartan and or maybe a couple through Spartan. So Okay. Yeah. And and can you turn that off and activate it like or by by the month? So for instance, yes. turkey season, I only need a few cell cameras, but deer season I'm gonna I want as many as I can afford to buy. Right. Yeah, that see that's how I am too. Deer season there's I've probably got uh every camera that I have activated this time of year. Um, I may put a couple out for turkey season, but most of mine are out for security purposes, uh, whether it's around the house or, or whatever it may be. So um, you, you can certainly deactivate or, or cancel the plan, whatever you want to call it, um, during the off season if that's what you want to do. Okay. Man, using those cameras for security purposes, like this, here's a little tip. So if you're knocking on doors and you're trying to get permission to hunt, I run into a situation where – they, this landowner didn't want anybody hunting because they had had in, issues with theft or damage around one of their barns. And I was like, Hey, I've got, I've got cellular cameras and not and even some non-cellular cameras. I said, what if I just help you out? I said, I'll provide like the security system basically for your barn. And then I can let you see this information or respond to it quickly and notify you if something goes wrong. And you'd be surprised that that, that unlocked that property to hunt. Absolutely. And, so cell cameras not only helped me kill a deer, but also gave me access to the, a prime piece of ground. Um, now the property I think has been sold since then, but 
truth of the matter is those cameras paid for themselves instantly that day. Right. Yeah, there, there's so many uses. Um, I think us as hunters, we all get caught up in uh, hanging our Spartan cameras on deer. Well, uh, since I took over this this job opportunity at Spartan, um, I learned that there's a lot of people that's using them for farming. Um, I don't know a whole lot about farming personally, but from what I've been told, you have a grain bin, and uh, I, I guess the grain is dried in that bin. Well, something, I guess there's a control panel that farmers have to go out and check multiple times a day to make sure that they're getting their, you know, it's still running and there's no uh, service codes. Well, these farmers are putting these go lives, like the, they're mounting them in front of that, that computer board that's telling them all this information. So instead of having to drive out to their farm multiple times a day or in the middle of the night, you know, they go live and they can see on the camera exactly what their, their computer monitor showing. And they know if they need to go out there and fix something or if everything's good. So, man, that's awesome. I, it's funny you talk about farm life and that side of it. I had somebody on social media the other day or, or contact me and said, hey, do I have any live feed cell cameras? Because they had whatever animal it was was about to give birth and they wanted to be able to check in on it in the barn without having to go back in there to see how things are going. And unfortunately, I didn't have one to offer them. Um but yeah, so that that's a, another unique use for cell cameras and even that live feed version that I most people wouldn't even think of. Yep. Yeah, th there's all kinds of if you get creative with it, there's so many things you can use them for. It's it's crazy. So, uh, but yeah, I, I hadn't even thought about you know the the farm life animals giving birth. That's a that's a sure way to know when the, the little one's there. I mean, you can just yep. click on that live feed and there it is. Yeah. I having a having a new baby at home i might have to pick one up myself that way i can sit in my office and work and then bring up the live feed feature and you'd yeah. be surprised like i remember the footage on the live the go live that i had versus the baby monitor stuff it's way better on the go live yeah it's, it's insane you know I, I used to joke all the time as as uh the go live is my new cameraman um I, I still pack cameras you know big professional cameras on a lot of my hunts but that go live footage would go great in a video. Um, and, you know, if you you produced it and edited it and all that, it, it would be perfectly fine because the quality's there. I mean, it's it's great. Yeah, I mean that th even having a third angle with a shot, man, that's always entertaining. To where you see somebody's got a GoPro or whatever set up, and you get to see the arrow come out of it. But somebody showed me a video the other day. It was a Spartan go live, and, and the guy actually they were using a crossbow and they shot this buck through and uh, shot this buck on camera with a go live and you could see the bolt actually flying through the air and i'm just like that's a tremendous footage that even some really good camcorders aren't going to catch because they're so fast oh and yeah. he was shooting like a raven or a like a high-end crossbow I, i've got multiple they're probably not as good as what you're saying but i have multiple uh videos of, of arrows blowing through the back side of a deer or uh my papa actually shot one with a rifle last year, two years ago in, in our West Virginia rifle season. And um, I got a really cool video. Like you can see the blood blow out the backside of it. So um, it, the quality's there. I mean, it, it honestly, it's impressive to me, very impressive at, at how good the quality could be in something that's sending a video to your phone. I mean, it's, just, it's insane. Yeah, and especially it's it's a hunting product. So when I've I've utilized a lot of different cell cams. So with huntinggeardeals.com, I get to test a lot of products, and, and some make the cut, some don't. But what I found like testing Spartan cameras was a higher quality image and video quality versus some of the other cameras that I have, maybe a little bit cheaper. Image quality is just not as good, and I think that's that has kind of stuck with Spartan from the beginning till now they just seem like they have got a good grasp on quality versus quantity and we see a lot of companies out there like oh well we make 10 times the amount of cameras that the ex other companies do but they don't get as good a footage sometimes absolutely so yeah that, that's always i've always explained it um you know i like to try to simplify things to where people that maybe aren't as, as knowledgeable as me will understand and I think the best way to describe it is trucks. You can go to the car lot and you can buy a base model truck and it's still going to get you from point A to point B. But 
Um, you know, if you want to ride around in luxury and have leather seats and, and navigation and, and all that cool stuff, then you go with the higher package. Obviously, you're probably going to pay a little more for it, but uh, you're going to have those luxuries to, to fall back on. Speaking of navigation and trucks and stuff like that, do any of these cameras equip, are they equipped with like a GPS feature in case something was to get stolen? And cause it's a high high dollar investment. Like if I get, if it gets stolen, like am I going to be able to recover it? Yes, sir. So actually we have, that's one of the benefits, uh, the, the go live one, the go live two both have. And that's also another reason that they have that built in uh, lithium battery. So it's pretty neat. Um, it, let, let's say somebody steals your go live camera off the tree you know that their first instinct is i'm gonna take the batteries out in case um it is taking pictures or or it can be tracked um so they take it to their house well it still has that lithium battery that has charge on it and that allows you to still be able to access the gps and and find out where your camera is and i, I think they say it's it's within a hundred feet or a couple hundred feet but in most scenarios it's a lot uh, more accurate than that so you can you can definitely find that camera if it gets stolen man i i had because the reason why i asked is i had one stolen this year and i was able to track it down to the person's back porch really um, and knocked on the door and was like hey it, actually it was my buddy i sent him we shared the camera so this is one of those shared camera stories and i was like hey man i, I can't get there i have like we've got a baby whatever the deal was like i can't leave my wife going on at the time and so he go he leaves his family 11 12 one o'clock at night uh he knocks on this person's door and is like hey i know you got my stuff bring it back and then he come out carrying both my cameras and no issues and like oh sorry we didn't know it was yours even though it was on private property and but we got our stuff back only because of that one feature was the gps see I, i've never really had problems with people stealing cameras here in southern west virginia um cell cameras i should say now if you hang a regular camera and and there's no antenna they will they'll grow legs and walk off every time um if if you're in a you know a well-traveled area cell cameras the only thing i can think is maybe people are scared of them because they haven't been out all that long and they don't know exactly what the capabilities are um so people typically don't mess with my cell cameras yeah i can't say that i've had them happen I lose a lot of non-cellular cameras, um, and if somebody can't get it off the tree, I've had several of them shot down in southern West Virginia. Yeah. So everybody that heard this 200-inch buck and you're going to go down, good luck, man. It's not the for the faint of heart. Like, I've had a lot of – I've come back and had tree stands shot, and, and that's a that's a device that if I get into and, and it's damaged, like, and I fall, like, that's a life-threatening injury. Absolutely. But that, and you don't know who did it. Like, it's just – somebody was there whether they were coon hunting or whether they want liked your spot better and they wanted to push you out of it like it's a rough area still and it, it's not as rough probably as what it was for like your dad growing up in that area but um yeah it's uh it's not for the faint of heart i will say that but absolutely it. you know i'll tell you another thing to, to add on what you said is if if someone wants to steal my camera, that's fine. You know, they, they can see that big buck that's running there. But the problem is, is everybody wants to brag about it. So then not only do they know, but they go tell 30 of their friends. Well, next thing you know, their 30 friends are up there hunting as well. So, um, yeah. And a lot of times as a hunter, if you've got a camera soaking out there, and this is what I'm using non-cellular cameras for. It's not something I'm checking. It's it's data for it may be the end of the season, next season, whatever that SD card is way more valuable to me than the camera itself. Absolutely. And when you lose the SD card, out, oh my gosh, you talk about a punch in the gut. Like oh, there's yeah. nothing worse than not having an SD card in a camera that you've been sitting there for six months. Absolutely. Well, what about, let, let's talk about not turning the camera on. You know, uh, you put that camera out in August and you forget to, to turn it on. Yeah. And that, that's one of the good things. That's another good feature we can go over on these cameras is the, the the newer spartans actually turn their self on so um you know you, you turn the camera to on and you got to go through all the setups well then you're technically you're supposed to arm the camera before you leave which which turns it into i'm sure you you remember the the off setup and on days that that spartan had well we no longer have setup so you click the camera to on you go through your settings and then you're supposed to go in the settings hit arm camera whenever you're ready to leave the camera you know and activate it well let's say you forget to do that so you you're changing your delay and and 
changing the the video mode well um you just shut your camera and you leave I, I don't know the exact time but it's not very long maybe a minute or so two minutes that that camera when it's it's not getting any activity it actually arms itself so you don't have to worry about uh, leaving your camera off and, and driving you know an hour back home and having to go back and fix it so it's pretty cool little yeah, thing I can't tell you how many times I've been broken hearted to get there and you and you're thinking, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to check this card and you get there and it's in setup mode and and you never made that switch up or you forget and you're like, Man, did I do it? Because you've done it in the past. So you walk all the way back to the four wheeler of the truck and you're like, ah, stupid. I can't remember if I did it. So you gotta walk all the way back and kill another hour or two. Yep. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. I've I've had cameras before that I set out and you know you in the summertime, I usually let my regular cameras soak up at least a month, maybe two. Yep. And, and you, you go back in there and check them, and and you got that big fat zero on the on the photo count. So that's that's always fun and, and disheartening. So the the only thing we probably haven't talked about is the SD card itself. Like, how important is the SD card that's going into that camera? Yeah. So Spartan actually recommends a class ten. Um, and i always use those because i have had problems I, i've not tried them in the newer cameras to see if if maybe they're a little better but they're they're real particular about using those class 10s um because if not you'll have i, I know i've got some photos before and like half the photo will be uh gone like it'll just be half maybe the the right side and then the other side will just be static like i'm sure you can remember 20 years ago when you turned the tv on it would be staticky for uh 30 seconds and then you know you would start seeing the color and all that so it's the same thing when that was the problem i was having is when i would use a, a cheaper sd card like you would run a regular uh non-wireless camera uh, i was getting those those distorted photos and stuff like that but as long as you use the class 10 i've, I've not had any problems in years so good uh, and I've, i think a lot of times when people have issues with cell cameras because they take a higher quality it's because of the sd card yeah uh, and and the reason why I know that is because I've done it. Like I've like, oh no, it's not that big a deal. But when you think of the TV side of it, like remember the switch. For, you might not remember. You're younger than I am. But <laughs> they, the AV cords versus HDMI cords, and right. that, yeah, you, know, you think about the video games and the plugins and all that. That's kind of what the difference is. It, it makes that big a difference. It's HD versus non HD when right. you come into these high quality c cameras. And I've got a five thousand dollar video camera set up here in the floor which is probably stupid on my part, but it takes a high quality SD card to get the most out of it. So you got to expect yeah. the same with these high end um, cell cameras as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I've also had the issue before of, of having a SD card. I, I don't know what the, the life expectancy of an SD card is. Uh, there's some that I'm running in regular cameras, the non wireless cameras that I've had for probably 10 or 15 years. But I, I've had issues before of the actual SD card going bad. So I can put it in any camera I have and it won't work anymore. So it just it won't send photos. Um, so that that's the only other problem I've ever had with SD cards. Um, but as long as you keep a, a, a good class 10 in there, then you don't have to worry about it. Yep. So the people that are going to listen to this, which is the majority of it, rather than watching the podcast, like here's two SD cards right here that crapped out on me this year and that it affected the photos that it took because they just went bad um, but my fault it's a cheap sd card and they're not class 10s but i wasn't running them on regular cameras high-end cell cameras i run them on regular cameras and it's another one of those situations where you got to pull that card and there's nothing on it and uh it's a heartbreaker so i need to i try to do inventory I, i'm really particular on my trail camera or my sd card inventory not as much as so remember josh bias he passed away now but he had an sd card for each camera not one for the camera and one to replace it when he went so he had each one of them labeled and i never got that in depth with my sd card management system but i do keep a routine check on them and keep clearing them i can't tell you how many times i've went with buddies and stuff that change cards are like oh all my cards are full but i don't want to delete anything like man that's what external hard drives on your computer are for like save those pictures that way you don't lose them yeah that's uh, i'm uh i'm the the opposite of that usually if i'm clicking through you know I, i'll go pull my cards whenever i change batteries or whatever and i'll click through them 
If it, if it's not the buck I'm after, they typically don't get saved unless it's just something that could be used for social media. So yeah, uh, makes sense. Yeah, man, I, I've got trail camera information from the time I started using them. I can I've got folders labeled locations, dates. I can pull up be like, oh, you remember that buck from 2012? Yeah, hold on, and I, I yeah. can go pull that cam and information up because I was trying to track and keep track of all these deer for years at a time and my, it was fun but at the end of the day i didn't kill that many that many deer because yeah. of it but i got lots of photos yeah brother um i don't i'm gonna put you on a spot here is there anything new coming down the pipe that spartan wants to just tell us now before it gets released and just break news now well th there's nothing that we can talk about yet um if you were at ata you probably have a a, a general idea um of, of what it's going to look like at least uh but yes we have i think we have uh three new models two new cell cameras and one non uh cell camera coming out uh the plan is by summertime to have those out so stay tuned for sure and um we'll let you all know just as soon as we get all of our ducks in a row and, and can can spill the news well when that time frame comes shoot me a message We'll talk back on the podcast and whether we need an hour to talk about it like we did today or we need 15 minutes, you're always welcome back here, brother. Good deal. Well, I appreciate you having me and uh, anytime we can do it again, let me know. I'd love to be a part of it again. All right, man. Uh, now, where can the consumer find more information about Spartan Camera? Um, you, you can go to SpartanCamera.com. Um, if you haven't already, go to our, our social medias and check us out. Plenty of big bucks on there and, and maybe even some strutting turkeys that, that you might find interesting. So, Well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Hunting Gear Podcast and special thanks to Chase Herndon and Spartan Camera. Spartan Camera and HuntingGearDeals.com have teamed up to bring you a 10% off coupon code that you will can find at HuntingGearDeals.com. But for quick reference, enter HGD10-SCPS at checkout to save 10%.